I see our taskmasters have allowed you a moment's respite as well. We have to hand it to these alchemists. They are determined to see this endeavor of theirs succeed. I've never been one for blind optimism, but I sincerely get the sense they're close to a breakthrough. They had better be, or all this effort was for naught. The peoples of Eorzea, of the Far East, of Thavnir, children of this star united in common cause against a dire threat. Yet ere they succumbed to suicidal madness, were not the Telophoroi born of her body as were we? They who cling to life and the promise of the morrow's dawn, against they who desire death and an ending of their own orchestration. The victors of this war alone will hold the right to answer the question of existence, of its meaning, and its worth. Poetic and ominous to a fault. That said, if it's an existential debate in nature, then our arguments might not be as persuasive as you'd think. Van Daniel wants to die and take everyone with him in an orgy of pain and suffering. An utterly vile and unforgivable idea. And yet, and spat upon by fate and wailing in the deepest pit of despair, who among us can say they have not entertained similar thoughts? There are nights black as pitch, bereft of hope. No words of comfort can reach you. And it's all you can do to grit your teeth and choke back the bile. The more you see and suffer life's injustices, the more difficult they become to bear. Vengeance is nurtured in similar soil. Though your anger has a broader focus, the sentiment is much the same. A fervent desire to destroy others, to see them drown in torment, as you have. That about sums it up. The will to endure is not always as strong as the urge to burn it all down and salt the earth. Survival be damned. It's a struggle, often close and brutal. Indeed. Well. I, for one, shall pray survival proveth more appealing in the end. As will I. Besides, our chances are much improved when we've the company of others committed to the cause of life. Our vengeful dragoon here is proof of that. What is it? What did you see? Van Daniel, are you sure? If he knows we've been working on a countermeasure. It holds. The vessel holds. This is the one. At long last. Look, we have finally created a talisman strong enough to withstand our experiments. We've named it a warding scale for the time being. With this in your possession, your soul should be completely shielded from corruptive ether. Afforded such protection, any one of us may approach the towers without fear. Thou hast mine admiration. It is an invention of historical significance. I thank you for your kind words. But I would prefer you keep them unsaid until we test the talisman's efficacy in the field. It is for the next stage of our plan that we summoned you in the first place. To accompany me to the Tower of Zot. 
Should the scale prove effective, as I very much hope it will, then you'll have little to do. But should the effect be weaker than anticipated, I must ask that you restrain me, or knock me senseless. Either way, we are fortunate to have you with us. Nidana, I, I... Are you certain you wish to do this? If others are to trust our creations, then we must have faith in them first. And as the senior researcher, it falls to me to lead by example. But, should I fail to return, then learn what you can from this attempt and apply it to the next. Our work must continue. Is that clear? We'll keep an eye on the place while you're away. Assuming Fan Daniel is lurking about, there's no telling what mischief he has in mind for us, or you. Be on your guard. Shall we be on our way? I'll have one of the soldiers at the hatchery prepare us a boat, and we can set out from the northern shore. I'll see you there. We should soon cross the threshold of the tower's influence. Any moment now. It's working! And you... you are still yourself? Then I'd like to see how it fares closer to the tower if we could. So far, so good. The scale's protection appears to be holding. If 
We can just make it to the tower's entrance. A few more steps. to the sisters we made it and the scale has proven itself to be everything we hoped it would be now we can focus on production once we've equipped and returned with an entire survey team this menace will soon give up its secrets Do calm down. You'll only hurt yourself thrashing about like that. Stop! Oh, you can't do this! Please! A little late for heroics, I'm afraid. Hmm. The similarities are striking. My, my! Such hostility! Never before has my artistry so displeased. My patrons of old would have positively squealed in delight, though, between you and me, I find gushing praise exhausting. Allow me to tell you a story. Surely you yet to hear the one about Van Daniel, the sundered Asimov. I inherited the position and the soul of the Van Daniel who sat on the convocation in the time of the final days, theoretically speaking. Practically speaking, that fact is of no consequence. I was born and lived as, well, me. Eventually, I was recruited into the Asians and imbued with the former Fan Daniel's knowledge and memories, but I never felt that they were truly a part of who I am. How to explain? Perhaps if I told you who I was before my Asian embrace, although that chapter too is a past I've long since discarded. I have it on good authority. You've poked your nose into an elegant ruin or two, yes? Then I expect you've heard of me, the old. Um, um, at, at 
your service. Imagine a nation of unbridled prosperity. Every need met, day after day, of unbroken, unshakable peace. Existence fulfilled and ripe for decay. You are a genius without peer, Hamon. However do you conceive of such delightful experiments? That fool was beside himself with panic when he awoke with the head of a bull. <laughs> Even his cries for help emerged as so much guttural lowing. Oh, oh, oh the memory of it. <laughs> My poor sides. My friends and I were so consumed by laughter, we struggled to breathe. No more than entertainment for bored wastrels ignorant of its worth. My all-consuming work. But it was not their only indulgence. For they were ever hungry for stimulation. Slaves to the slightest hint that amusement was afoot. Our nation was ailing. But I would see the poison purged. I resurrected a legend, our first and greatest emperor. And just as I had planned, he set our way with empire back on the path of conquest. An inexhaustible ambition carried us onwards, always onwards. Yet, he who delivered to us such glory was not to be satisfied. Heed me, Armon. No matter how vast one's empire, or full one's treasure vault, all is rendered meaningless by death. In the end, all is lost. You know as well as I that the Emperor stands to lose this war. And so I have come to claim you. For while your methods leave something to be desired, we cannot deny the results of your work. And as fortune would have it, the seat of Van Daniel, your rightful seat, lies vacant and waiting. Take your place amongst your peers, rather than die a pointless death amidst the ashes of your doomed nation. Send one of your clones to the Crystal Tower that you might see for yourself. See what lies ahead. The fall of the Empire affirmed the truth, majestic and tragic, as the Emperor foresaw. Scheme as you like, build as you will, nothing endures. What is life but a brief jaunt ending in emptiness? So easily, so easily distracted. distracted. Why, 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 I almost, I almost left, left without, without saying, saying farewell. farewell. 
As for your friend, you needn't worry. These pawns are far more useful to me alive as fuel for the primates. Uh, uh, uh. If you attempt to pull them free, they will die. So, enjoy tackling that conundrum with your comrades. We shall we meet, meet again. again. Not in what it means. My spire is oh, no, no. But, but somewhere more suitably grandiose. Your, your favorite, favorite playmate, playmate is, is ever so eager to see. 